Dang it. Netflix stocks are dropping. We need the next hit reality series. Tim, what you got? Love is Deaf. Much like Love is Blind, they have to wear noise-canceling headphones and stare at each other until they fall in love. Needs more development, but I like your thinking. Johnny, hit me. Too distracted to handle. We get a group of people with the lowest attention spans, and they have to listen to President Biden's speech on human infrastructure without getting on their phones. Not quite, but I like the way you're going. Apple, any ideas? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Apple, come on, our jobs are at stake. I don't wanna work. I'd much rather get fired so I can stay home and cuddle with my blankie. Gosh, Apple, you're such a snowflake. Wait a minute. This is not okay. And dramatic. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Well, don't just stand there. Get this man a blankie. What's up y'all? So the other day I was taking a stroll across Netflix lane when I came across their newest reality series, Snowflake Mountain. And this show is absurd. Like I highly doubt that any of it is real. So the premise of the show is that a group of adults who are considered lazy and unmotivated are tricked into doing a survivor course in the middle of the woods. Let's take a quick look at the trailer. Snowflake. A young person who's considered overly emotional, <laughs> easily offended, fuck you guys, this is not okay, and dramatic. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. There's a heap of young adults who can't even unload a dishwasher, let alone hold down a job. Okay, so from the trailer, my first impression of this show is that it's a very boomer show. I mean, the announcer really fits the stereotype with that statement. Ha! Kids these days can't even wipe their own butt, let alone hold down a good job. I mean, the premise of the show focuses on the laziness of Gen Z. Like, how boomer can this be? And that's where we come in. I'm Joel. This is my buddy, Matt. I was an Army combat engineer for almost 10 years. I'm former Navy explosive ordnance disposal. It's basically the bomb squad. Think Hurt Locker. Oh, well, I guess I was right about the boomer thing. These two dudes really fit the stereotype. I mean, the two hosts of the show look like guys who wear shirts that say beers, bacon, gun, and freedom. Also, why does this intro seem like a sitcom? Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Joe. I was an army combat engineer for 10 years. I was part of the bomb squad. And, and together, together, we're the Boom, boom Brothers. Brothers. Did somebody say boom? I mean, the two hosts of the show look like some guys who would say, back in my day, we didn't have toilet paper. We had to use sandpaper instead. Even though these guys are only like 10 years older than the contestants. So that gives you kind of a good idea show. You know, some absurdity for some reality TV gold. But before I get into the nitty gritty of everything, make sure to hit that like button and slap that, that subby B. Slap that subscribe button like you have the same boomer mentality as Joel and Matt. And it's your dying wish to slap some sense into some snowflakes. Anyway. Let's do it. Sometimes we find material things actually weigh us down. And the fact is, sometimes we can actually do more with less. Mm -mm. Excuse me? I think this is a joke. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Where is my stuff? What are you doing with my suitcase? I need my shit back. All of it. Pronto. Okay, I know if I was put on this show, I would absolutely hate it. Not because you're surrounded by the outdoors, but because you're surrounded by the most annoying people in the planet. Mr. Joel, can you help me with that? Absolutely. I also know that I would hate this dude. I mean, he seems like a masochist. Look at that sinister look. You, you little, little devil, devil, you. Okay, it's not a bomb. Like, Are you dead? You're not blowing it up. Oh! I got all my going outfits in there. What the f just happened? I would be flipping out just as much as these guys. That's not cool one bit. There's millions of dollars of stuff in those suitcases. And Homeboy just did the most 
devilish smile you ever seen. I mean, what if something valuable was in there? All right, so the next lesson is that sometimes you have to let things go. No! <laughs> All my personal belongings were in there. Well, sometimes you just have to let things go. My wallet, my keys, my social security card. <laughs> what? My passport, my birth certificate, my laptop. Well, why would you bring all those things anyway? I thought we were going to a different country. I thought we were going to Belize. Okay, so this next clip is gonna scar you for life, so be aware. So go ahead and gather around here. So I'm like right super excited, cause today is my fucking birthday. It's her birthday and she's vegan. Keep that in mind. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Devin. Jesus. That's not a birthday present. It's a deer. What? I'm a full-blown meat eater, and I cannot do that. No, no, no. Sir, no, not for me. I'm gonna throw up if I look at that. Same, fam. Same. So a bit of backstory for this next clip. So on the first day, the group had to retrieve their own food as part of their challenge. And this dude, Solomon, stole marshmallows and chocolate from the group. The marshmallows! And Solomon had a crush on Devin, so he gave this for her birthday gift. Hey Devin, so you're not having a good birthday right now? No, I'm not. I actually got you a treat. Oh my God. Do you remember when Matt and Joel had us go get our supply drops? Yeah. I told you that we only got like nasty food? Yeah. Well, and also, I got you a chocolate bar. Vegan, of course. You gotta keep this a secret. Do this make you happy at least? I guess. Okay, here's why I think this is fake. I mean, look how unnatural and scripted this conversation seems. I actually got you a treat. Oh my God. Like, I can't tell if this hug is awkward because it's scripted or he's just giving her that ick. <laughs> also, why does he seem so creepy doing this? And also, I got you a chocolate bar. Vegan, Vegan of course. <laughs> like, what the heck? Sup, I got you chocolate bar. Vegan, of course. Also, homeboy didn't even try to hide his diabolical plan. We got a real Dr. Doofenshmirtz up in this B. Also, is chocolate even vegan? Because this was looking like some class A milk chocolate. Hey. Oh, hey. I bet you're having a bad birthday, huh? No, I'm having a good birthday. I got you some chocolate. <sighs> vegan, of course. Um, this isn't vegan. Shh. You better keep this a secret. So in the show, there is this place called Last Chance Lake, which is basically camping at nighttime. Last Chance Lake is a place where contestants are sent if they're not completely immersing themselves in the experience. However, after Matt and Joel chose three contestants, wilderness warrior Ray has to choose who gets saved. Also, this clip might get copyrighted, so... We sh is not fried because the conditions or the stakes at hand, but rather how dramatic reality shows will make a normal scenario. If you put dramatic music behind any normal scenario, it's automatically gonna be more intense. Hey, uh, Professor Vernon, what's the answer to number seven? B. The answer is B. Hey babe, you wanna see a movie tonight? Nah, I just think I wanna stay in. Well, sir, it looks like your test results came back. It's COVID. You have COVID. Oh, thank goodness it's not cancer. No, you also have that too. Cancer COVID. COVID cancer. 
All right, that's what I got today, folks. Overall, this show did end up being super wholesome and uplifting for the contestants. I highly recommend that you watch this show and you watch it all the way through. If there's one thing I'm sure in life, Netflix knows how to make a great reality series. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and make sure if you like, leave a like. And if you had a good time, subscribe. Till next time, folks. Peace.